You ready? Showtime. On May 3rd, summer starts with the fall guy. What are you doing later? Let's drink a spicy margarita. Make some bad decisions. Yes! Audiences are falling in love with the most entertaining film of the year. Fall guy. Fall guy. Fall guy. That's what the poster said. See Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt in the movie critics say exists to make you happy. Trying to make it out? Nope. Because I don't either. It's not what I'm into right now. What are you into? Talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Fall Guy. Only in theaters May 3rd. Read it PG-13. Get ready for the greatest roast of all time. The Roast of Tom Brady. A Netflix live event happening May 5th, hosted by Kevin Hart. The seven-time world champion gets his cleats held to the fire by famous friends and frenemies on an unforgettable night where everything is fair game. Tune in on May 5th at 5 p.m. Pacific time for The Roast of Tom Brady, live only on Netflix. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio, with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello everybody, welcome to the latest Anfield Index Under Pressure podcast. My name's Dan Kennett. We don't have Sai this week. He is preparing for a cup final. Woohoo! So, yeah, Derby Ladies Cup final. Keep an eye out for the results, everybody. But um, we, that means we don't have Sai, but we do have the rest of the guys. I do have Dr. Bart's evening, Phil. How are we doing, mate? You're right. Well, I've got to admit, mate, I've been better. Yes. Yeah. Considering a local boy like yourself, that's going to be a killer. Right? Well, I mean, 14 years in between away losses at Goodison, and it's still too soon. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> oh yeah, fuck okay, I mean, shit happens, yeah. yeah. Uh yeah, and I do have he's not Virgil van Dyke anymore. He missed a week. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's back down to being the Joe Gomez of the podcast. It's Hamza Kali Luna, sports writer at the Times. Evening, Hamza. Evening, yeah. I wish I was uh I wish we were all preparing for a cup final, but uh just Sai has that privilege, I guess. To be fair, Hamza, you are more handsome than Virgil. <laughs> and that takes uh, some doing. I'll tell you. He's wearing a tie this week. Much better well. than mine. Yeah, I, 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 he's been off to interview somebody today in Ooh. London. I reckon with that. You reckon with that with that combo one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it Amarin to Chelsea? Amarin to Chelsea? Is that what it is, Hamza? Uh, that, uh, and honestly, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, we are not. We are going to do the Everton game pretty much as normal. Um, and then because basically the West Ham game was um, effectively a dead rubber from all our perspectives, um, we only spend a short amount of time with West Ham. And then we're going to talk about our new manager on a slot um, for the last 20 minutes or so of the pod. But without further ado, um, this was always a horrible fixture, Bart, coming into it. I mean, I we had a discussion on here when we were top of the league and favourites on the predictions models that you said, I don't, I'm not having it, right? That these models cannot factor in the United and Everton games for Liverpool, United and Liverpool away. Oh, and here thanks. we are, the graveyard of our title so, campaign. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And also shout out to uh, Chuck in uh, Discord. Uh, Chuck the he, Chuck. He, Chuck the Chuck. He also said the same thing. He said, even when we've, we're looking at this run game, we can win these games. Yeah. You've got United and they've been away. And as we know, when we were a, uh, probably the best side <coughs> in the world, those two fixtures also cost us the title. 
So, yeah, you're right. The, they will always be that way. It's like uh, North London Derby used to be like it as well. Although it's become a bit of an easier fray for uh, Arsenal recently, although they, I don't think they've won as much as, as Tottenham as you think. But, yeah, there's, there's derbies. There's local derbies in terms of United for us, and I don't think any other side in the in the league has that really. When you're going for a title, that is, they have other derbies, but yeah, yeah. In the context of a league where you can't drop any points, it, it's absolutely crucial. Um, well, especially after losing to Palace, yeah, in all yeah. That. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I think um, even when we had the 136 wins and two draws out of a 38 game sequence, 110 points out of 114, best, the, the winningest run in English yeah. Premier League history. The two the two draws were Everton away and Man United away. Yeah, that's what I mean. That that's our best side probably in living memory. And well, the best between. football is the best team of all time. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, no one's ever come close to 110 out of ah, 114. Ah. Wow, it's true. It's true. Oh dear. Uh, and uh, Hamza, um, uh, did you had you made your peace with um, not winning the title after the Everton game? Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Anyway, without further ado, give us those teams, Hamza, then. Will you stay on? Yeah. And so, then the lineups. Uh, the big news before the match, before the Everton match, was that Jota was out for two weeks. <laughs> uh, the, the bit of news that uh, we probably least wanted uh, of all the players, I think, it would have been him or uh, Van Dijk, I guess, or, or Salah. It would have mm-hmm. been the three that you didn't want injured for, the, for this particular period. Uh, that meant that, uh, yeah, there's a few tweaks, uh, but I'll run from the back first. Alisson was in goal, and from right to left, it was Trent, Canate, Van Dijk, and Robertson. Um, first choice, back five. Yeah, well, this is the discussion to be had now because I think Simon raised it, um, Last either week. on Discord or on Twitter or on WhatsApp, but it doesn't really matter where he did it. Uh, that the points per game is just higher with uh, with Gomez in, and that's um, we've discussed this before. Mm. What's Gomez's role in the team? Um, how defensively robust are we with him? Uh, does he offer that much in possession? No, but what in terms of counter attack and physical presence, as in preventing counter attacks by inverting and offering a presence there, uh, and just being a physical presence for defensive set pieces and that sort of stuff, uh, we know that he he's valuable in that sense. So yeah, that, that is a discussion to be had, and maybe something that we can consider uh, next season as well um, mm. under the new manager. But yeah, uh, so that was the back four. And to be honest, when you're looking at trying to chase the league uh, and trying to win and be as aggressive as possible and taking the game to opponents, that makes sense. You'd still want Robertson. You'd still want Trent. Uh, you'd want them to get on the ball as much as possible. Robertson in particular was uh, one of the better players when form dropped off recently. So yeah, you, you understand that contemporaneously, uh, it makes sense. Uh, mm. There's no big issues there. There's a discussion to be had, but I don't think there's some... You're not looking at the team and go, oh, Gomez not playing is a big error. It's rather, what do you want from the team? And I think it makes it made sense to go with Robertson and Trent for this for this game. In midfield, it was Joe, uh, Jones, McAllister and Sobersley. Uh Yeah, uh, that meant Ender was on the bench. Uh, so on what I just mentioned, if Gomez is there and Endo's there and they're both playing in, in field, then you probably got more than enough physicality, but not enough ball progression. Uh, maybe pairing Gomez with Alice is probably a bit better. Uh, but yeah, uh, again, with this match in particular, you expect to be on the ball a lot because Everton sit back, they depend deep, uh, they try and counter-attack. So you, you want an energetic midfield three to counter-press, recover balls, and be able to slip passes in between the lines. Uh, so you understand the logic there again. And the front three is Salah, Nunez, Diaz, Nunez down the middle, Salah on the right, and uh, Diaz off the left. No sort of complaints here, I think. Absolutely. And and Bart's the Everton team. Um, obviously, yeah. the narrative here is that Everton have become a good team since Sean Dyke stopped wearing a suit. Yeah, so, potentially. Um, the only thing I was going to add was Cody was out because his wife was pregnant. I think he was actually down to start. Was he really? That's what was kind of hinted pre, pre-pod, so uh, pre-game. So I'm, I know that... It is what it is on the night, but um, I'm just noting that Cody potentially. I'm not really sure. This. Uh, yeah, I, I think um, I think Everton would have quite fancied uh, in their mood they Everton were in. I think Dwight, uh, you know, um, would have yeah, been well, just... a little bit up against them. Um, the Dogs of War mode they yeah. were in. I think they would have quite Maybe. fancied Cody Gap lining up against Cody Gap. 
Well, versus yeah. people who miss big chances, yeah, sure. But uh, no, no what I mean, it's just, just, in, just, <laughs> in, just in terms of the just in terms of the general yeah, fight physical. and the what the battle, yeah. But the Everton lineup for me, uh, two changes for them. Godfrey comes in over Young and Gardner in for Gomez into midfield, which meant they had Pickford in goal. They had Tarwoski. Um, I can't even pronounce the. The centre the fullback, Vitali Mikalenko. Uh, Mikalenko, there you go. I knew I could remember if I had someone told me. Uh, Braithway and then Godfrey, and then Young came on for Mikalenko after he got injured just before half time. And the plain decor, the plain decor is the ten, which tells you something, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, very, very much so. And we're five in midfield. Um, three had, dogs in there, basically. Three dogs in, the in it. Yeah, God, nah. Oh, I can't remember the numbers. Gway. Now. Um, Gway, that's it. And then uh, the quarry in front of him. And then you had two wingers in McNeil and... So basically uh, they're trying to get something out of Calvert-Lewin, McNeil and Harrison. And yeah. then Harrison's has always been a decent Yeah, player, so. yeah. And if you look at the uh, average positions for the passing, they kind of did what Atlanta did. They avoided our middle. They went yeah. around the outside. Uh, they did different because when they got there, just looking to win a set piece. Rather than Atlanta would look to get a quick move and score, uh, they avoided... Zone 14, half spaces, didn't use any of them. Just went around the outside and tried to nick a corner or a set piece, which is effectively worked pretty well for them. And it's just a slightly different tweak on um, Daishi's way of playing, I would suggest. Um, but yeah, that's that's roughly where they are. Uh, um, in terms did, of like, um, did Everton's, um, did the passing, just before you come on to us and stuff, did, yep. did, did the Everton passing networks in your in, in, in database show you anything in particular about <laughs> Their game plans? Was there enough passing in there to generate uh, passing No, links? there was. I was just about to say that. The the chain <laughs> links, you know I do chain links to, to, to give you a little idea about the pattern of play. They yep. basically registered very low or low, which means that all 92% of their passing chains were below five passes. Yeah. Uh, so that shows you what they were trying to do. Did any of the players there. have connections? Oh, now that is a very good question, Darth. Let me just go to the uh, that particular tab. Give me two seconds. Great radio. Yes, we had three players. So we had Godfrey with Harrison, uh, Guaye uh, with McNeil, and Pickford with Calvert Lewin. Lewin. Yeah. Hey! There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. But um, uh, yeah. yes. So and they're all just over the limit of a table of five passes. So the table you have to be right. on the table with five passes. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. Before we go into the pa- before we go into the early stages and stuff like that, um, yeah. do you want to give us the match summary? The, of uh, course. The, the, the I'll do the match summary because I really don't want to get into too much detail on this. Uh, no offense to anybody, but there you go. Uh, rounded up about sixty eight percent to us, and therefore thirty two ish for them in terms of possession. Uh, touches eight nine eight versus their four three five. It goes along what Hamza was saying. They didn't want the ball. Bill tilt sixty versus forty. So interesting. Um, total shots twenty three to sixteen. Uh, penalty box shots is even pretty much fifteen versus fourteen in our favour slightly. Uh, six yard box is the killer again. They had four in the six yard box. We had none. Mm. Um, in terms of big chances, I've got six versus three. That I must have, maybe I should check that again, but that, that seems a bit high. Uh, goals two versus uh, zero. XG two one point two seven versus two oh nine. Um, EPV they created point five eight, and we created one two. No, was six was six on the uh, fop mob? It wasn't. Oh, so I was right. Okay, fair enough. I thought I'd made a slight error there, but that's good. Um, so they converted their their, EP, their threat to XG at 220%, and we converted at just over 150 at 164, which again is a is a bad trend that we've done in something like three out of the last five games. Yeah, um, <clears throat> we, we normally convert over 300% per game. This that's a bad game for us. Part um, success 88 versus 62. Yeah, but another another game where come on to this game with in West Ham is that. But the game where the two, 23 shots for 2.1 XG, that's not good. That's not good quality. No, uh, it's below below league average shot quality again. Yeah, it excuse your models in terms of probabilities because the model suggests that we should have won the game to 1, 12% because of the amount of XG we have, but actually if the shot quality is not. And therefore, in terms of probability of outcome, should have been 57% to us to win and Everton were in 19, uh, which is pretty good. really? Yeah, yeah, really on a, on a Monte Carlo. So... But that is, as yeah, that's said, considering it was six big chances to three, that does surprise me on the Monte Carlo that it was that one. So it's this is the argument Sai's been having all week with us in the chat, isn't it? A big chance doesn't necessarily mean high XG. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Monte yeah. Carlo's done on XG, right? So yeah, it, true. It's, so you, that's why I'm saying that this that this this particular Monte Carlo is slightly skewed. When we come to the West Ham, I think it's a fairly fair representation of the game. This one, because it's based on XG, I can see why it's come out with it is. But actually, when you look at the game in the context, you know, 23, 16 shots and six big chances, three, you're like, mm, OK. So if we look at the XG in the game of all the shots ranked, um, what were, what were the what were the just just this is um, what were the um, the biggest shots in the game? It's only a kick, a jump, a block. It's only a serve. It's only a tackle, a run. It's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. From the launch your online shop stage, all the way to the we just hit a million orders stage. No matter what stage you're in, Shopify's there to help you grow. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash special offer, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash special offer. I don't need a VPN. I've got nothing to hide. <laughs> this is what I used to tell myself before I hooked up with libertyshield.com. Not only is my home internet now fully encrypted, but I can now access all the websites I want, whenever I want, and do so from absolutely anywhere. As a Liverpool fan, I love to know I can now watch every match, regardless of whether it's on UK TV or not. My Liberty Shield VPN makes sure nothing is blocked and guarantees me super fast streaming speed throughout that match. You can get connected right now with their software package, which includes a 48-hour no-obligation free trial and instant access to their apps for Apple, Android, Fire TV, PC, Mac and Android TV. Or go a step further like I have and get one of their pre-configured VPN routers. These small but powerful devices allow you to easily connect every device in your home to VPN, making it the perfect solution for smart TVs, mag boxes and games consoles. Visit libertyshield.com today and use coupon code AIVPN25 to get 25% off at checkout. I'll have to go to my F3 tab for that. Uh, for us. And... So our highest, so the it... highest XG for us in the Everton game was 0.58 at the Darwin chance. Oh, wow, yeah, okay. And then you've got Diaz, uh, the one after that was 2.5. You've got another Darwin chance at point. And Everton's highest for the two goals, was it? Brand 3 uh, and Carver Living? No. Their highest were Decore at 21, uh, 0.21, sorry, and Cavalu at, at 0.2. Uh, okay. so, so that's probably why, because, yeah, because if yeah. Darwin Chance is what, 0. 0.6, did he say? 0. 0.5. Yeah, yeah. 0. 0.5, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that, you can see what That's going to show, because that, let's yeah. be frank. Which is fair to be honest, it was, a 50% fair. Ch- it was a 50% chance, definitely. The, what did we say before off time in our chat? Probably should have been 2-1 up. We've played awful, but <clears> the two chances we had just before half time, you, you you should be taking those. Yeah, that, that that's the story of the season, right? Yeah. Um, Hamza. Now I don't know because you're so young. Right? I don't know if you were around enough to to know about Joe Royal in the 1990s and his Dogs of War against Roy Evans' his Spice Boys. <laughs> so but, you know, was that, yeah, this was this was a this was a throwback. This was a, mm. this was unle- unleashing the hounds of hell. On Liverpool, and I, I think it's fair to say, Hamza, that we did wilt a bit under the uh, physicality and and everything else. And um, right from right from the very start of the match, it wasn't going great for us, was it? Uh, so, yeah, yeah. I, I think there's two key themes to pick out in this match, and one is jewels, and the other is set pieces. Yes, but, but jewels. If if there's one that's bigger than the other, I'd actually say jewels, even though both the goals came sort of from set pieces. Uh, overall, well, well, just hold that thought. Hold that thought. Is that also remember, du- duels can end in fouls, which is a story of this match, and then the fouls then produce the set pieces. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yes, connected. In in total, um, 
Everton uh, uh, won 54 fouls to Liverpool's 41, 35 on the ground to Liverpool's 26, 19 in the air, which is <laughs> remarkable when you when you think of the personnel that Liverpool have yes, uh, and what you expect from them uh, compared to what Everton have. And, uh, so, yeah, so if we go to Van Dijk, we can have a look. So he, he, he won two so, of his... So ground jewels, the two attempted and two two successful. Mm-hmm. Uh, won nine of twelve aerials, uh, which is a bit lower than he usually does. Um, I think he's averaging is it over eighty percent this season, which right? is which yeah. is like historically Super high. You yeah, know, that's his best ever, and I think the list the best in the league. Nine out of twelve. I don't think you can have too many complaints with nine out of twelve. Mm-hmm. But the story which Ganks was saying to us in the chat was about the way that Everton were. Um, Maybe taking Van, yeah, maneuvering Van Dyke, and he was getting very frustrated, even from a, a very early stage, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, and um, I'll just give the, the stats on Canati as well. He went four of six, so sixty-seven percent aerial jewels uh, and two or three ground jewels. Uh, so sixty-seven percent is is usually okay for a centre back, but just for Canati, I think uh, usually it's a bit higher. I think uh, I haven't double checked that. I think he's, uh, se- I think he's low seventies mm-hmm. uh, for the season. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, in which case, the sample size means that you're probably not going to get low 70s. So that's a probably around average match, right? So it's just two or three. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, so I, I thought Jules was the, the the overriding theme of the match in Liverpool, losing them. And, and that was evident from the start and it led to the fouls. Uh, there's a high number of fouls in this match too. Um, sort of abnormally high. Uh, I'm just... Trying to yeah, the, the Everton won the foul count thirteen six. Thank you. Um, we had what was that? What was the possession? Two thirds to one third. Yeah, and Everton yeah. had two thirds of the fouls given to them, and we had one third of the fouls given to us. So that is a story. Uh, and the reason that works quite well out for Everton is because they actually have the highest share of xG from set pieces in the league of any team. Yeah, so not necessarily the best team at set pieces, but they create their large the largest share of their total xG from set pieces. It's it's thirty four percent, which is Massive. I mean, uh, so if you think of other teams uh, that are sort of known for their set piece prowess this season, uh, take Arsenal, right? Uh, because they've scored 20 goals from 13.8 XG from set plays. Wow. Uh, that's that's so their total XG from set pieces is just uh, uh, as a share of all their XG from um, including open plays, 20%. Uh, so yeah, Everton at thirty four percent. The next highest on the list is uh, Brentford. Oh no, sorry, it's uh, West Ham, uh, who have twenty eight percent of their actually come from set pieces. Luton twenty seven percent, then Brentford. Uh, so yeah, uh, they're really really high for creating their XG from set pieces, uh, think- which usually is a sign to try and avoid set pieces where possible. But they're they're able to win fouls quite often. Uh, which works to their advantage. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a combination of the jewels, the fouls, and the set pieces. And one thing that anyone who's watched Sean Dyche's sides since, his, uh, since he was at Burnley will know that one thing he really likes to do is target the back post. He's quite different from mm-hmm. most other yeah. uh, set piece sort of um, styles in that he's in swinger because he, he prefers using the in, in swinger where possible. Uh, he's actually pitched to the back post for someone at the back post to sort of stand up and head well, down. Well, remember, remember his Burnley team did score a goal directly from an in-swinger at Anfield mm. because yeah, that's right. they're very similar to the goal, second goal here. They double-teamed Alisson on that occasion and they mm-hmm. actually were directly in because he was double-teamed by Tarkovsky and Ben Mee. And, yeah, here was Tarkovsky back in the... Uh, back in haunting us again. Uh, yeah, and um, it, it, it's uh, most teams when they use the in swinger looking for the flick on at the front post and then attacking at the back post. But Dice does it a bit differently. It's pitched all the way to the back post, where either someone can head it back across goal or they can stand up and isolate the. the usually, it's a well. Anyone at the back post is often going to be isolated if if they're standing still covering the zone, and someone's got a run on them. It's just very hard to defend. So yeah, uh, as you would try and do an open play. Uh, Dice tries to rep- replicate that in uh, in set pieces. So yeah, all those sort of elements came together, uh, and I think that that's mainly the sort of theme and story of the match. I was just going to add that in this game, Hamza, just to back you up there, that on the graph I've got for breakdown of where XG's created set pieces and corners, if you add those up, are over 0.6 XG, and they only produce 0.12, 1.2. So yeah, it's about 50% of this game. 
And I think also the, the key little context there is you go to back post, you hit it across, your defending side have got a turn to face yeah. the ball. And if you're already expecting the ball to come across you and attacking, you can play and you've got that momentary <laughs> second to be free and score. And I think it's a, it's a clever ploy from Daesh. It's very simple, but it, it's it's extremely effective. Yeah. And I think just to just expand on what you said, Hamda Hamza. So, I mean, you, you said we won 15 aerials as a team, but Van Dijk won nine of them. Um, basically, if you look at the rest of the team, there were so many players with zeros, right? <laughs> Literally, because uh, Canati won. So, outside of Canati and Van Dyke, we won two. And um, if you look at the fouls on Everton's players, the most fouled player was Calvert Lewin with four. Um, and then it was Everton at 13 in total. But all the fouls, all our fouls were committed by midfielders and forwards. So, three by Jones, two by McAllister. Two by Diaz, two by Endo, and the killer was it in in in, in the, when the when the pattern of the game was being shaped. Um, two of them were by um, McAllister in the right channel in the defensive right channel, and two of them by were by Jones in the defensive left channel. Uh, I don't know. I couldn't tell you if they were all on. Um, I don't know. I can't recall if they were all on Calvert Lewin or not. And some of them were soft, right? It's fair to say, Phil. Right? Some of them, some yeah, of those yeah. fouls were soft, but. They were buying them, and our midfielders were committing these soft fouls, and you know, creating dangerous situations for us. Yeah, it, it's we've spoken about how the forward is affected by going behind. I think the midfield you get panicky to get the ball back, and you make errors. And then when you're t- when you're <laughs> fatigued, you can't get around the pitches quick enough. And the I, I would was McAllister six, wasn't he? Um, yeah, he, he's not turning and running after players. He's not McAllister's strength. Uh, and that's probably even the knee, knee was endo, so it, it's probably you're, you're asking for. Um, they are potentially going to give up quite a high amount of fouls in this game because of the areas they're going to be in. But CJ and uh, Dom should have, I felt, should have performed better, and that should have been smarter. They're normally mobile players, they're normally smart with the fouls. But yeah, for the midfield not to effectively, what is it? The average win rate for a duel in uh, midfield was twenty three percent. So you know that that's that's pretty poor. Uh, to be honest with you, you know, as, as a unit to not do that when Everton have put five in there with three of them being dogs at war, uh, you just need to do better. And we didn't, we weren't good enough. Well, one of the things you talk about, you mentioned Don there briefly, one of the things we praised him about in the autumn was the amount of duels he was involved with. Yeah. And, and he was barely involved, he barely wanted to get involved in the physicality in this game. No, he's and, 50% for ground and zero for error. Yeah, but I think he had virtually, he, I think he was voting in the actual number of duels he had was very low. Yeah, yeah. But he, very low, and yeah. But he was having, like, in the in, in, in August, September, October, he was often having 16, 18, 20 duels a game. Yeah, yeah. And in in the top system, we know that the midfield has to do dual function, has to help the attack, has to be a workhorse yeah. to prevent the chat runners into defence, right? Yeah. If they don't do that work, the defence get overexposed, they're already defending massive spaces, so it's easier to pick them apart. And that's not quite Everton's game plan, but the same pretense, you know, you end up with the defence being overloaded, they commit a foul, ball comes in the box and Everton get a chance to score. It, it's a different kind of way of looking at it. But if your midfield doesn't do the work of stopping those runners, stopping it earlier on and winning the ball back without fouling them, um, yeah, the defence is going to get overloaded. You're going to create more fouls in the final third, which is effectively the pattern of play Everton went for. Um, yeah. it, it was disappointing to see, but I, I think... So. Tiredness, I, I know we keep saying it, but it's a real thing. It's a yeah. real thing that these guys are fundamentally, they're done. They're out yeah. of food. Yeah. They to get... Yeah. Yeah, overplayed. And everybody, every, overplayed. everybody's fried. Everybody's fried. Everybody's fried. We have no, so I'll be honest telling you, they're all red. They are. We've seen the charts in the chat. One of, I mean, there's a shade of red in, in size of fatigue in this. I've never seen before. <laughs> is that red? So crimson, it's, is it? it's crimson yeah. on a lot of the players that started this game. So, yes. and, it's, and, and I know people will say, well, you're just making excuses, but it does, when you have nothing left to give in a high intensity emotional game and the opposition start like that, and there's a point you just like, right, I'm going to try my best, but they're just going to overpower you because they're yeah. playing one game a week for the whole season. They know that they can be up. This is a derby at home. They got an early, early goal-ish, I think was it in the first 10 minutes or so. Yeah. And then it's completely in their game plan. They can well, they had, to, they had one disallowed in the first 10, but yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Hamza, now there's going to be people listening to this pod absolutely pulling their hair out, shouting, what about Trent, Right. We haven't, I don't think we've ever done the, the lineups. We haven't mentioned his name. And I think we need to talk about Tank generally. Um, 
and over the two games. And the, he got a lot of a stick online for his, uh, so we say, the way he, sh- he sh- shit out, I think is the technical term in Liverpool, of some challenges in the Everton match. Um, and his general positioning and way he, at times he was holding hands with McAllister, which is not a good thing, ever a good thing really, um, for a midfield structure and stuff. How did you see the Trent role in these two games and generally since he's come back? Uh, I think uh, he's, there's been moments where he's looked really good and he's often, uh, I think the first noticeable action that he provided this match was a quick pass to Salah. Yeah. Um, and that was probably, and it was a Salah played it across the field. It was almost, it was nearly the pass of the season. It was that good. Mm, yeah, it was, it was excellent. Um, but after that, uh, I don't remember too many passes of uh, of quality from Trent. I, I think, as is often the case, when a player's out, uh, you, you need to build them back up. Yeah. Uh, and there's just not an opportunity to build them up because Liverpool need to win. They need to pick up matches. They need to, yeah. It's high intensity stuff. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't think it's been particularly good. Uh, I think there's been moments where he's shown his quality and in those moments, he's still fairly head and shoulders, just one of the best passers in the league. Uh, but yeah, the, 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 he struggled and sp- particularly on the set pieces. Uh, I mean, the second one uh, where Dominic Calvert learns at the back post, uh, it's quite a an obvious ploy the way they work it because Calvert-Lewin is hiding behind uh, Tarkovsky, I believe, and then yeah. just it's round uh, and Trent is a man at the back post and he doesn't attack it. Uh, that's just the... Uh, yeah. Not, yeah, that's quite cool. Uh, I don't think there's too much fun on that. That's, that's poor defending. Uh, usually we, we try and... Um, often there's criticism of Trent that are disproportionate, but I think that's a, a fair one. He, he was poor in defending that set piece and on other set pieces as well within this match. But um, he's not a full fitness, but well, that doesn't ex- quite explain why uh, he, he, he's not defending set pieces properly. No, and I know, and, and we agree. And he's another one at the moment. We're saying a lot of players are fried, but and Trent's one who unfortunately was undercooked. And I think it's fair to say Curtis Jones has looked has been horribly um, mm. well below what he was pre-injury at Brentford. Same with Zabozlai. He's been a shadow of the player he was up until November. Mo Salah's looked like a shadow of the player he's been for seven years since his, since, you know, since uh, maybe I the Man United. Yeah, well, yeah, but he did. He, he still had a brilliant game, you know, some brilliant performances, you know, on the way where maybe the City game was just passing. The, the other yeah. passes, wasn't it, and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So a lot of the players who are coming back have really struggled and look completely undercooked and everybody else just looks completely fried. It's a, which is a nightmare combination, but... No, 100%. The only thing is... I don't defend Trent for the first goal, by the way, but I would say he did have a key moment in the Nunes chance. He had a yeah. key moment for the Diaz <clears throat> chance. He also put a through ball, which Nunes couldn't get his feet sorted out with. Yeah. All in the first half, should have done. Yeah, yeah. And he did the clip pass for Mo, which, to be honest with you, again, we should have scored from. It was a lovely move across. There's a thing... What was his, what was his XT on, um, on, your, on, your, on, your, on your model? Hey, how high was it? I just flipped off that page. You just called me late. <laughs> um, I'm testing you, mate. I've got points, uh, one, one, highest in the team at 0.17. Okay. So, so for EPV, that's high. XT will be higher uh, for the game. So, because mine's always slightly under because it doesn't include it and it includes um, certain. I would things. have thought, honestly, that passed to Salah from what from, 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 he played it from the, 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 the right half space to Salah, you know, on the side edge of the corner of the six yard box. I thought it yeah. would have been higher that, even on EPV, but there you go. Have a look at what Opta's XT have given him for the game. So Opta's XT have set a high, they've given him 0.4. So yeah. again, he's highest in the team. So that gives you an idea of the difference between some model. As I said, XT, Opta's XT was always higher. But the only thing I was going to say was, um, so that's for Trent in terms of his, his involvement. He has looked fried. He's also, it's unfortunate that the, the moments of brilliance he's providing are going to players that are also fried, right? So yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a great, uh, not a great combination uh, to say, but. Yeah, no. Yeah, okay. Um, but I think it's fair to say there's a quite a large gap between his on and his off ball. Yeah, no. That's, that's being fair. kind. <laughs> that, that is, that's being kind. Uh, I think the second goal, I would say, when I first saw that, I was like, what's going on there? But they moved Van Dyke out of the way. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So he, do you know what I mean? Whereas Trent is still there, and I've heard some people criticise Trent for not defending it, but um, they moved Van Dijk out of the way, and Van Dijk would have got that quite easily with the header um, if they didn't do that. Um, and the first goal as well is really scrawny. I mean, Ali actually gets half a body on it. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of, it's not <clears> the cleanest hit. On another day, Ali saves that, he collects it off the post, and, and we're going away. But yeah, it's it's unfortunate. Um it, yeah, on the rewatch, it, it's not any better, but it's still, you look at the chances we had in that first 45. And um, yeah, I think earlier in the season, we would have scored a couple uh, yeah. and we'd be talking slightly differently, but it's not that. So, Hamza, um, just in terms of the, the chronology of the match, Everton think they get, they have the first shot um, early, early on, they shank it wide. And then they think they got a pen. And I think this is a bit of a, it's a slightly fortuitous overturn for us. Is this a bit of luck? What do you think? Uh, let me just pull it up it, again. He's uh, offside. He's definitely oh, he's off, offside. He's definitely offside. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And this happens is going to tell me differently. Yeah. I think he's definitely offside. I think it's the right call. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we get then we get Trent's big moment, and then Everton pretty much Everton take over after we have that really after Trent's sublime pass, and then so Salah squares Salah does the right thing, right? He squares it across the box, but then the Everton defender just gets it back, and somehow. Scoops it wide, to be fair. Yeah, it's a really good clearance. Uh, mm. it's, it's quite a difficult um, situation to defend, and he, he, he does quite well to uh, get ahead of Nunez, and I think there's another player there as well. Yeah, he's coming uh, in the back. Mm. Yeah, uh, Curtis. Uh, also, yeah, yes. he, he does quite well to to squeeze it, get in between both of them and uh, get it away. But yeah, when Everton take the lead, I, I think we spoke about this a while ago, but this is like a a major trend now so since the start of last season uh, Liverpool have conceded first on 32 occasions in the league uh, 32 32 that's going to be about 45% of matches mm-hmm. wow uh, and uh, wow this season <clears throat> uh, uh, and in total uh, of those matches those 32 Liverpool have won 9 drawn 11 lost 12 uh, this season they have had 16 matches where they've conceded first. They've won and drawn six each uh, and lost four times. Uh, and it, it's really interesting, right? So the amount of times that Liverpool have scored, have actually scored first is 18. Uh, and that is the seventh most in the league, which is just peculiar, peculiar for a team uh, that is third and was in the title race. As For comparison, Arsenal have scored 27, which is the most... And City have scored 22 times, as in to open the scoring. As we know... And I, and I think that's going to be fairly... What Arsenal got is going to be fairly close to what we were in the title season mm. when mm. we won the game. We won the league after 31 matches. And I, I I reckon we scored first in at least 26 of the 31. Mm-hmm. That would be my guess off the top of my head. Uh, and remember, so you, you just mentioned that we won the league after having many matches, but we won the matches within... Oh, It'll be 25 minutes, don't, right? Yeah, don't, yeah. Don't. yeah. Early goals. So, so I'm, I'm just going to yeah. go through this. <laughs> no, no, it's just painful. <laughs> I'll go through the stat that, that I mentioned before about yeah. the, um, the goal difference by period. So uh, Liverpool uh, minus five for the first 15 minutes. Then for the following uh, periods, they are uh, four, seven, seven, eight, twenty. 20. <laughs> <laughs> the 20 is the final period. And this includes added time as well. So that's why it's a bit yeah. thicker. Uh, and that that twenty period is the most of any sort of fifteen minute chunk of any team in the league. Wow! Um, but yeah, minus five is the second worst. Only Sheffield United have have a worse difference in that period. But the, uh, the goal that Everton scored came in the second period, which is where Liverpool have four goals. Um, as we know, you take the lead. Uh, that makes the game a bit easier for the team in the lead, and the team that's trailing has to take on more risks, makes them a bit more susceptible to counter attacks, all that sort of stuff. We know that. Uh, but what I, I actually want to get into is the actual share of time spent winning and losing. Okay. That, that links to actually the intensity sort of stuff. So when City and Arsenal rack up goals in that last period, in that, that period at the end, so they have eight goals. This is City, sorry. And Arsenal have 10 goals in that final 15 minutes of matches. Mm. But what they're usually doing, it's already 2-0 or 3-0 and they're just racking up an extra goal. It helps with goal difference. Uh, what Liverpool are doing, they're playing the full the full 90 minutes because they conceded first, they're trying to get level, and they're trying to win the match. They're not just trying to add an embellishment to, to, to a settled scoreline. Uh, they're actually trying to win. And that, that, that intensity has been 
the characteristics throughout the entire season. So 90 minutes for Liverpool is just 90 hyper-intense minutes in the way that 90 minutes for Arsenal is probably 30 intense minutes and the rest where they're seeing the match out. Mm. Uh, so we, when we think of the players in the red zone in terms of minutes played alone, I don't think we even realise that the intensity of these matches is even higher. So when these players are, are, uh, are returning to fitness as well, uh, and Liverpool concede first, suddenly they're in for a really, really intense 60 minutes after Everton score because they're trying to chase the game. Uh, and that's, what I think, what is essentially uh, killing the players and which is why the team has sort of ran out of gas towards the end of the season. Uh, and if you look at the time spent winning, Liverpool have spent 33% of their time overall this season winning. Arsenal spent 45%. Man City has spent 49%. Imagine mm-hmm. spent half, the, half your match winning, right? It becomes a lot easier to manage compared mm-hmm. to just a third. Uh, in terms of drawing, so when mm-hmm. game state is level, when you're in a precarious situation where one goal can just change things, uh, Liverpool has spent 49% of the time drawing. Arsenal is 43 City 41. And in terms of losing, uh, City have spent 11% of the time losing, Arsenal 12, and Liverpool 18%. And there's actually, uh, yeah. I think it's five or six teams, I think it's five teams who have actually spent more time winning than Liverpool, which is totally bizarre when you remember yeah. that third. And yeah. two weeks ago, we're in the title race, and three weeks ago, yeah. top of the league. The idea that the team top of the league actually... <laughs> aren't actually winning matches for very yeah. long. And that there are five other teams that win matches more than that are winning matches in time terms more than them is 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 uh, pretty bizarre. Uh however there there is one uh, cool stat that's uh, a bit of a gem. Uh when Liverpool do concede first, uh they actually they win a lot. There's only three teams this season that have not dropped points when scoring first. Uh Liverpool, Man City and Fulham, no one will get that. But yeah, um, that, that wow. is the... Uh, no one will get that. The, the, the nub of the, the issue here. Hey guys, it's Eddie Gibbs from Anfield Index here. I hope you're enjoying this podcast and I'm sorry to call time on the show before it ends. In the current climate, it's tougher than ever before to offer podcasts for free. At Anfield Index, we produce over 75 free shows every month, which I'm confident is unparalleled in the LFC sphere. Whilst we'd love to offer everything for free, the production costs now make this impossible. That said, we don't want to follow the model of other channels and lock all of our content behind a paywall. So what we've decided to do is to continue offering every show for free, but cut that offering to 30 minutes on our longer shows. So to get all of our shows in full and enjoy the best of everything we have to offer, we really hope you'll consider supporting the channel and signing up at AnfieldIndexPro.com. For about the price of one cup of coffee, you'll get every podcast in full with zero ads. You'll also get access to our LFC VIP community, where you can enjoy live podcasts, engage with our podcasters, and chat with other Reds in real time. So that website again, anfieldindexpro.com. Join today. Sports Social Podcast Network.